I'm going to hell. What is going on, you guys? It's Extreme here, and I am back as I am every single day at 8 a.m. Pacific time with another episode of Road to Max Prestige. Now, for those of you out here that enjoy this series, if you would like to help me out, I greatly would appreciate it if you hit that like, share, or favorite button. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it so very much. Thank you. So, today, I thought I would talk to you guys about what it was like to live on Booker Boulevard. Now, here in San Diego, there is a well-known stretch of road known as, well, I don't know if I want to really describe it. Um, ah, screw it. It's known as El Cajon Boulevard. And the reason I refer to it as Hooker Boulevard is because that's where you go if you want to find a hooker without going online or paying some service, whatever. How do I know this? Well, I'm a guy and it doesn't take a blind man to see when you see a lot of women dressed slutty as fuck also, I did kind of work on El Cajon Boulevard at the Hollywood video that no longer exists. Um, I think I've talked about that before. But, um, yeah, so Hooker Boulevard, as I refer to it, uh, when I lived in that area, the area I lived in was really predominant with uh, prostitution. The it, just, it was, oh my god. You couldn't get away from it, you know, um, which kind of sucked because, yeah, it, it, oh boy. In my apartment complex, I know for a fact that there were two women living in the complex, and I, I use the term women in one of those instances very loosely. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but I know they were prostitutes. And it never bothered me. Like, I was like, you know, they got to do what they got to do to make a living. You know, I can't fault them for what they do. Me personally, I would never go after their services because, well, I've never paid for it and I never will. Seriously. Never paid for it. Have no interest in doing that. Uh, I don't fault anyone who does, you know, teach their own, but it's just not worth it to me. That's just my stance on it. Uh, regardless of that, living on that stretch of road, and I didn't actually live on Hooker Boulevard. I didn't live on El Cajon Boulevard. I lived off of it. I'm not going to say where exactly, but um, it, was a, it was weird at first. When I first moved into the area, uh, this was right after I was homeless, you guys. For those that don't know, back in 2002, yours truly and his entire family was homeless. There's a whole video I talked about it, so you, it's in the last season of Road to Max Prestige. You can go find it. Um, it was it was weird because once we got into the neighborhood, you know, it took a little adjusting because the neighborhood is not bad, but it ain't great either. You know, it's 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 not a neighborhood you brag about. You know, it's one of those neighborhoods you sit there and you're just like, this is where I live. You know, and. The cool thing about where we lived was the management staff at the apartment building, they went out of their way to take care of their people. Now, not all of the people that would run that apartment complex felt the same way, but the individuals that me and my family dealt with, they always went out of their way to help us out however they could. And, um, you know, I never faulted that. You know, I was always grateful for it. But um, finding out that we were living that close to active prostitution it was a little unnerving at first for me especially because I have you know issues keeping certain parts of my anatomy in my pants so I'm joking I'm joking I'm joking um, it was weird and I was like dude holy crap like this is 
I don't know. It was kind of awesome, I guess. I, I, I got to look into it. But this is... By the way, I really fucking hate quick scopers. Just saying. Um, so the experience was different. And I think I've shared this story once before. I don't know if I have. But when I lived there, from time to time, you know, it'd get boring. You know, I didn't own... When we first moved to the area, I didn't own a PlayStation or an Xbox or any of that stuff. Uh, I had an N64 and a GameCube. And I just got in the GameCube, which was cool and great, but there really weren't a lot of games for the GameCube that I wanted to play. So I'd find myself at times, you know, sitting there, twiddling my thumbs, smoking a cigarette, and I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to go do something stupid. And I happened to know a neighbor that owned a lawn chair or two. And I said, hey, you want to go to a liquor store and get some snacks and go sit on the street corner and watch hookers get picked up? And he looked at me as if I was out of my fucking mind. Thought about it for a second and goes, are you buying? Yeah. All right, let's do it. And I kid you not, for about three weeks straight, every Sunday, he and I would go and sit at the corner of our street and El Cajon Boulevard and watch the hookers get picked up. And we would laugh at it. We found humor in it. We're like, you know, we would actually try to look and see who these Johns were. We weren't trying to help cops out, none of that shit. We were, we were just finding humor in it because we, we noticed a trend real quick. Like, half of the fuckers that were picking up these chicks, I mean, I'm not a good looking dude by any stretch of the imagination, but these motherfuckers were ugly. And some of the chicks they picked up were questionable at best. Now, this brings me back to the comment I made before. One of my neighbors, again, I've, I've made this comment, is, was, a prostitute. But this neighbor was not female by birth. And I found out in the most uncomfortable of ways possible. Um, so I'm online one day goofing around and I happen to come across this ad. It's on Craigslist. All right. Leave me alone. Uh, Craigslist was just coming out at the time, by the way. So I'm on Craigslist. I see this ad and I'm like, damn, this chick's hot. Wait a minute. That's my neighbor. Wait a minute. Oh, fuck. That's not a chick. Uh, uh oh. And the reason I say, uh-oh, is because prior to this, my neighbor offered me some, um, I guess you could say, special fun time. For free, mind you, for free. Apparently I was their type, so, okay. Only one problem. This individual was not catcher if that makes any sense I guess I should be a little more specific um, my former neighbor because I don't live in the area anymore um, was transsexual and she uh, I, I'm, I'm really not sure how, where to go with this but yeah so that happened to me and that kind of put an end to the whole hooker boulevard camp out and when I told my, my, my friend, my the other neighbor, the one that would join me for the, the campouts, what had happened, he just kind of looked at me and goes, yeah, I should have probably warned you about that. I'm all, yeah, thanks, dude. Really appreciate the delay on that fucking upkeep. And he's all, well, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't know that was going on. And I'm all, you bastard. So uh, living in that area had its ups and downs. And the constant traffic of of prostitutes it was never something I dealt with where I lived but I, I did deal with it and I think I've talked about this before I did deal with it when I worked at Hollywood video I don't know if I actually talked about that or not I don't I, I may have talked about it I don't remember but um, because as you guys may or may not know I tend to do multiple takes of these videos in the last few days I've done literally one and said fuck it I don't know what I'm gonna talk about but I'll have to remember it cuz yeah just saying um where am i going with this now uh hooker boulevard yeah hooker boulevard 
there were some attractive women that would walk that street, though. I'll be honest. That you, every now and again, you would see just, oh my God, give me money. I kid you not. That actually happened to, to me on one of the days we were sitting there. I looked at my buddy and I said, dude, you got a hundred bucks. He looked at me and said, no, no, I'm not giving you a hundred bucks. No, no, that's not a chick. I guarantee it's not a chick. I'm all, I'll bet you a hundred bucks. And we never found out, but he would eventually agree. Yeah, you're probably right. That's probably a chick. It actually was hard to tell. I hate to admit that, but it really was. You'd be sitting there going, what do you think? Real or fake? And we're not just talking about the tits either. We were talking about like, is that a real chick or a fake one? Yes, you, and when, the part of the reason why you would have that is because this particular area that I lived in that was also so predominant with prostitution um, was real close to, I don't know how to put it. Um, it was close to a neighborhood that's well known for um, I really am trying to figure out how to put this without and I'm not trying to be politically correct I'm just not trying to say anything offensive um, the gay a gay community it was very close to a gay community where you know I wouldn't say that's where all the gay people in San Diego lived but it was a very a very very predominantly gay community there's nothing wrong with that there's a lot of really good shops out there man a lot of good restaurants too um, but you would get that. You would get that too. There were guys that walked the street. We found that out while we were there. We're like, dude, wait a minute. Wait, is he? No, it happens. And I thought that was weird. I'm all, wait a minute. Was that a dude that picked him up or was that a chick? We honestly never wanted to find out because we're like, hey, each their own, man. Do what you got to do. But wow, you know? Now, I know there are male prostitutes out there. They're not nearly as both obvious about it, but the fuckers we saw, oh, oh, they were obvious. They were obvious. The only thing that you couldn't tell was, were they selling to women or to men, or were they just like, fuck it, a dollar's a dollar. If that's the case, <laughs> I feel bad for them. Um... Cause I don't know, I, I don't know if I could if I could do that, you know. If a woman offered pay me, which that has happened, um, oh that's a story I could tell. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to think of things to talk to you guys about at the same time. So, uh, anyways, so <laughs> I don't know if I could honestly, you know, do that. Like I don't know if I'd ever be willing to, even if I needed to do it, I'd probably be like, mm, you know what? I'll go sell a kidney. That's easier. Because I don't have to feel uncomfortable doing it. And plus, it probably pays better anyways. Um, but yeah, so that was, the ex I guess, the story of living at Hooker Boulevard. I don't know how else to put it. This, this was... I was all over the fucking place with this one. Uh, <laughs> seriously, I, how do you discuss living near a, a predominant... And when I say predominant, I mean actively constant ongoing activity of, of prostitution I you walk outside if I was still live in the neighborhood right now I could walk out there and wait maybe two minutes you'd see someone get picked up anyways thank you guys for joining me I hope you guys enjoyed this episode I will be back tomorrow with another one and tomorrow I'm gonna talk about my time working at Target so it's gonna be a little interesting because I'm not just gonna talk about working at Target anyways until next time, adios. America. I have the right to look at a pair of tits. I have the right to be a grown ass man. You start taking the right away from me to be a grown ass man, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna punch you in the face and I'm gonna kick you in the dick. Seriously. And for the record, for those that say, well, what about the women? They got dicks too, trust me. Because they act the exact same way. Okay, that makes no sense. I, I was going somewhere with that, but it doesn't make sense. No, I just, I really am tired of these religious nut jobs. And don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't 